Good evening, good evening everyone. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight. To all my moderators, if you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat room. Put a one in the chat room. Good evening, Gail. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight. If you can hear my voice well, thank you, Gail. Appreciate it. We have a... Uh, we have a tr uh, pretty sad story to talk about tonight, and uh, not that each stream will be dealing with something sad, it's not my pleasure to do so, but I believe that uh, stories need to be addressed at times, especially when it's something that just seemed so sudden and so unnecessary and so avoidable in a lot of cases. I mean. An accident is just that, an accident, but I believe sometimes accidents can be avoided depending on how we act and what we're doing, you know, and uh, in my personal opinion, um, I feel that this particular accident probably could have been avoided. Um, Obviously, I can't be certain. I was not there. I don't know what took place prior to the accident taking place. But from the looks of the accident, the damage that was caused because of the accident, and the level of injury that the occupant sustained in this particular accident tells me that something could have been avoided. And I'll express and react according to uh, the video that I'll show you tonight. And then you make your assessment and you put what you feel. Tell me what you think in the chat box tonight. And uh, according to what you feel took place in this particular accident. I'm going to be discussing um, a tragic death between two individuals, two young individuals. One the age of 20, one the age of 24. Um, and that is the tragic death of Mr. Devin Willick, who was the star offensive line for the University of Georgia Bulldogs. They had just won their second national championship two years in a row. Um, like anyone in sports, when you have a victory, the need to celebrate is always there. I, I get it. You want to celebrate. You want to. You want to uh, savor the moment of the excitement that you that you experience as as a result of the win. I get it. And a lot of times, and uh, this is simply coming from my my reaction to it. A lot of times, you tend to celebrate a little too much. Sometimes you may do a little too much you may party a little too hard and then subsequently a lot of times you get behind the wheel and as a result things happen now there's been no report of any illicit drug use at least up to this point it's too soon i don't know that a toxicology has even been issued but again like i said uh looking at the level of damage that was done to the vehicle we're talking about a 2021 ford expedition this is an suv this is a pretty big strong vehicle the level of damage that this vehicle sustained as a result of this accident tells me that there was a high rate of speed that was involved at a high rate of speed, trying to negotiate any kind of turn, whether it's a winding turn or whether it's simply trying to make a left or right turn at a corner. At a high rate of speed, I don't care how good of a driver you are, it's nearly impossible to control that vehicle. A lot of times when we're behind the wheel of a car, we forget what the car weighs. We're talking about a car that weighs thousands of pounds with a velocity according to the amount of mileage per hour that you're traveling at. You're talking about this same weight of this vehicle moving at that same speed. 
very difficult to control that kind of weight at an excessive rate of speed when you're trying to negotiate a turn very very difficult you know it takes professional drivers years to learn that skill and what they do is they don't actually negotiate the turn they do it with a skill called um, gliding and that is what professional drivers learn when negotiating a turn at a high excessive rate of speed. So this is a really sad story. And I want to send my condolences out to the mother and father of Mr. Um, Devin Willock. His father's name was David Willock. My condolences goes out to you, sir. My sincere condolences goes out to his mother, Mrs. Charlene Willock. My condolences goes out to you, man. And I would say all of us, let's say a prayer for this family. Let's say a prayer for the family of Mrs. Chandler LaCroix, which was the football staff member for the University of Georgia Bulldogs. She was the driver in this particular uh, incident. And uh, both of them unfortunately lost their lives. A life loss is a life loss. It's tragic no matter where it happens and no matter who it happens to. You've heard me say in other streams, I know all too well of what it is to lose a child in an accident. I lost one of my sons in 2014 due to a car accident at a high rate of speed in which he was also the passenger. So uh, this, this story kind of hit home with me as well. That's why I wanted to share it. And I wanted to talk about it. Not only that, this young man was from New Jersey. He was from Milford, New Jersey. He graduated from Paramus High School. So he's a local for the most part. Um, and uh, it, it kind of hit home with me because of the way he lost his life and because of the way the young lady lost her life as well. Um, from what I understand with the report, which I'm going to share with you tonight, um, the young lady, 24 years old, who was the football staff member, member again for the University of Georgia Bulldogs, she didn't lose her life on the scene. She later lost her life after being transported to the local hospital, at which point they pronounced her dead. Um, the young man, Mr. Devin Willock, he was pronounced deceased on the scene. So, and he was ejected from the car. And from what I understand, he did not have his seatbelt on. And I'm going to tell you something, uh, guys. Um, one thing I am a stickler of when I drive is, is, is to wear my seatbelt. It's, it's almost a hat. It's like a knee-jerk reaction now. I put my seatbelt on immediately, and I've heard many different um, comments about seatbelts, uh, you know, that some some lives are lost as a result of the seatbelt, and had they had their seatbelt off, they probably more than likely would have survived. Well, we know that's true in both cases. We know that some that wear their seatbelt, and as a result, according to the injuries, had they had the seatbelt off and were ejected from the car, they may have say, they may have uh, survived. And then we've seen many cases like that where there was no seatbelt, the person was ejected and they lost their lives. In the case of Mr. Devin Willock. Uh, in my son's case, he had his seatbelt on. And as a result of the accident, no, he wasn't ejected but his body was battered from within the vehicle as a result of not being able to move inside that vehicle. So uh, again, like I said, this story is uh, uh, hit home with me, not only because of the manner of the accident in which these two lives were lost, but he's from New Jersey as well, the same state that I'm currently from. So uh, again, my condolences, my sincere condolences go out to Mr. David Willock, his father, who took a special trip to Aspen, Georgia, just to see 
that winning game in which they played against Tennessee State University. The second national championship game that they won two years in a row. And this is not something that you normally hear of in a college game, two national championships back to back. I hear he was an exceptional player, absolutely destined for the NFL. Number 77, rest in peace, Mr. Devin Willock and Mrs. Chandler LaCroix. Let's get right into it, guys. Again, I wanna thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. As you come into the building, hit the subscribe button and the share button so that we can continue giving you content. And again, I appreciate all of your support as always. Shout out to all of you on my Facebook group. Let's talk about it. Let's get right into it. As I show you this information, what I would like you to do, put in the chat room what you feel was the cause. I want you, I want to get your feedback. So I want to engage you in this particular uh, stream. So don't be shy. Just put in the chat box what you feel about this particular case, this particular tragedy in, uh, in the life lost of Mr. Devin Willock and Mrs. Chandler LaCroix. Let's get right into it. I'm first going to read some information. I'm going to share my screen, as you can see. This is coming from the Athens Herald, Athens Banner Herald. This is a news newspaper within the same city in which the accident took place, Athens, Georgia. The uh, journalist who wrote this article, Mr. Mark Weitzer, published 4.14 p.m., January the 17th, 2023. It says the crash that killed Georgia football player Devin Willock and recruiter, recruiting staffer Chandler, Chandler LaCroix early Sunday in Athens came after the 2021 Ford Expedition failed to negotiate a left curve, striking a curb with its front passenger tire leaving Barnett Shoals Road and ultimately coming up against an apartment unit according to a crash report released by athens clark county police tuesday afternoon the georgia motor vehicle crash report determined that excessive speed this is what i was afraid of the georgia motor vehicle crash report determined that excessive speed was a contributing factor in the crash the posted speed was 40 miles per hour. The investigation is ongoing. They stated about this young man, a gentle giant. New Jersey product Devin Woolock loved playing football for Georgia. ACC police Lieutenant Sean Barnett said that investigation will determine more precise speed from vehicle data and reconstructing the accident scene. LaCroix was the driver of the vehicle traveling southbound on Barnett Shoals Road prior to Shroud Road when the vehicle left the roadway, striking a Georgia power pole and another utility pole, cutting them in half. Mm. According to the crash report, the vehicle continued south on the shoulder striking a tree with its rear passenger quarter panel which caused it to rotate clockwise before it struck another tree with its driver's side that caused the expedition to rotate counterclockwise before it rested against the unit at Shoal Creek Apartments. A parked 2017 Ford Transit van at the apartment facing northbound was struck on top of the vehicle. The owner was notified. A police arrived to the crash scene at 2.55 a.m. Early morning, Sunday, at 9.30 Barnett Shoals Road, seven minutes after dispatch and ten minutes after the estimated crash time, according to the report. Willock, from New Milford, New Jersey, was a third-year offensive guard who started two games during the 2022 National Championship season. LaCroix was a football recruiting staffer from Tacoa. 
Wilcock, 20, sat in the driver's side, rear passenger seat. He was ejected from the vehicle, according to report, and died at the scene. LaCroix, 24, was extricated from the vehicle and taken to ESM, to Piedmont Athens Regional Hospital, where she was unfortunately pronounced dead. Two others with football programs sustained injuries in the crash. Georgia offensive tackle Warren McClendon, 21, who was seated in the passenger front seat, needed a couple of stitches on his forehead, according to his father. He was transported to the hospital. Hmm, thank God for that. He survived with very, very minimal injuries. McClendon had declared for the NFL draft Saturday afternoon. Another recruiting staffer, Victoria Tory Bowles, 26, was the rear seat passenger, was hospitalized with serious injuries and was in stable condition according to Prince Avenue Christian School where she graduated from. She was also taken to Piedmont Athens Regional. Willock and Bowles were not wearing seat belts according to the report. The crash occurred hours after Georgia football celebrated its second straight national championship Saturday with the parade and stadium event. Very, 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 very sad story. And again, my condolences go out uh, to these two families, Mr. Devin Willock and his family, and Mrs. Chandler LaCroix, and pray for a speedy recovery of those that survived this horrific accident. Report has already come in from Alive News, which is a newspaper in the uh, Tacoa area where Mrs. Shanna LaCroix is from, Tacoa, Georgia. It reads, funeral details have been announced for Chandler LaCroix. The UGA staffer killed last week in a car crash that also took the life of one of the football team players. According to LaCroix's family, a funeral service will be held at 3 p.m. on Wednesday at First Baptist Church in Tacoa. According to the church's pastor, it will be streamed on their website here. A family visitation was held prior from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. LaCroix herself was just 24 years old, growing up most of her life in Tacoa, Georgia. Kathy Thornton got to know LaCroix when she joined the Stevens County High School cheer squad in 2012. She's a firecracker from the get-go. She was just a go-getter, Thornton said of LaCroix. She just got things done. Anything you needed her to do. You just asked and she took the initiative and dotted every I and crossed every T, made sure it was done and you didn't need to worry about it. She impacted everybody, everyone's life, whether you knew her for two seconds or you knew her for a lifetime. Nuna Walker met LaCroix in middle school at two quickly became friends. Their friendship grew, group would travel and make plans to hang out often in Tacoa. It didn't matter who you were, where you were at, if Chandler could do anything, she most certainly did, Walker said. That's just the person she was. She had a heart of gold, met no strangers. If we were all together and one was down, she made sure she got you up, picked you up. An online obituary described her early years competing on her high school cheerleading team, winning the, winning the school's first ever region championship and placing at the state competition as well as attending several mission trips with her church, the one where the service will be held. In 2020, LaCroix graduated from UGA with a master's degree and joined the school's athletic department as a recruiting analyst. Chandler loved Georgia football more than anyone we knew. Her obituary reads, noting her willingness to give so much of her time to recruiting for the team. That passion and love would extend to making cards for families, decorating at events, and planning recruiting events. She had a way of making each and every prospect, their families, feel like her own family. She state, her, her statement added, 
The dedication wouldn't go unnoticed by the team. She made it her responsibility to help every single entity in the building, whether that be defensive and offensive support staff, nutrition, equipment, operations, and any department that needed a helping hand. Her obituary states, Every department of Georgia football lost a member of their team and she will forever be missed. The single vehicle crash in Athens happened hours after the dogs and their fans celebrated UGA's second national championship as, as many years. Bulldogs football player Devin Willock was also killed during the crash. His mother described him as a gentle giant who loved football and was so happy when he received an offer to play for the University of Georgia. Offensive linemen Warren McClendon, 21, and staff member Tory Bowles, 26, were also hurt in the crash. McClendon was released from the hospital Sunday evening. Bowles was still listed at, as critical, according to 11 Alive's UAG Insider with UGASports.com. Again, keep this surviving individual that's still in the hospital in your prayers for a speedy recovery. Separately, friends and family were looking for a jacket that LaCroix wore to the SES championship game that she lost. Anyone who might have found it should get in contact with Mercedes-Benz Stadium or the school to get it back to her family. Again, keep these this family in your prayers. This is Mr. Devin Whitlock, Willock, and Mrs. Chandler LaCroix. Rest in peace. Let's get into the report of this tragic accident. Again, thank you for getting on the stream tonight. Thank you always for your support. And as you come into the building, hit the subscribe button for all my YouTube subscribers. Thank you for all my new subscribers on my YouTube channel. I appreciate your support. Let's get into it. Well, tonight, there is sadness across Georgia, especially within Bulldog Nation, as two people tied to the UGA football program were killed in an overnight crash. This morning, we learned 20-year-old Devin Willick, an offensive lineman, and 24-year-old Chandler LaCroix, who served as a member of the football staff, died while traveling overnight in Athens. Good evening, I'm Kristen Crowley. This happened just hours after the Bulldogs celebrated their second straight national championship with thousands of their fans. Now there's an outpouring of sadness and just complete shock. We have team coverage on this developing story coming up. Reggie Chapman provides perspective on this tragedy to UGA. But first, let's go live to Athens, where 11 Alive's Dawn White joins us now with the very latest on this story, Dawn. Feel the grief in the air here at UGA. Fans were celebrating the national championship title win here at Sanford Stadium yesterday. And today, the campus is grieving the loss of two people. Let's take a look at some video that we shot earlier. This crash killed 20 year old offensive lineman Devin Willick, along with Chandler DeCroix. She worked for the football team as well. Athens Clark County Police say. LaCroix drove the vehicle just before 3 a.m. today along the Barnett Shoals Road in Athens. Investigators believe the SUV left the road, hitting two power poles and several trees. Offensive lineman Warren McClendon was also in the car, and he has been released from the hospital. A fourth person, Tori Bowles, who's a member of the football team, is in the hospital in serious condition. I spoke to a woman who says she heard the crash happen. I just hear this bang, the power goes out, and then it comes back on. Um, but I was curious, so I got out of bed and came out here. I can't even tell what happened, because they hit the power line, they hit a light pole, and then they hit the tree, and then they hit the building. Like, I, I don't even, and then they hit, end up behind the car. I can't even say how they would have gotten into that position. And you can see this memorial of flowers here is starting to build outside of Sanford Stadium. We will talk to students and fans here on campus and have the reaction for you tonight after the game.
And Don, we've been hearing those reactions all day. In a statement, head coach Kirby Smart said Willick was always smiling and LaCroix brought an incredible attitude and energy every single day. Governor Brian Kemp sending out the following tweet. Our hearts break for the young lives lost last night and their families. We are lifting up their loved ones, friends and teammates in prayer this morning. And former players speaking out, including Jordan Davis, who is now in the NFL. He tweets, quote, there is no grief without love and we love both of you like family. You can read more reaction over on 11alive.com. And as we said, it was just yesterday the Bulldogs were celebrating their second straight national championship. Of course, Devin Willick was part of that celebration, riding atop of a fire engine you see right there through the streets of Athens. Unbelievable. That was just more than 24 hours ago. You can see him there on top on the far left of this group right there. He even took to Instagram to share the experience he had with his fellow Georgia teammates, including a selfie with fellow lineman Tate Rutledge. Willick even made sure to get shots of the large crowd which lined those streets. And many of those Bulldog fans saw him Saturday afternoon just smiling and enjoying that celebration, soaking it all in. So hard to believe so much would change overnight. 11 Alive sports anchor Reggie Chapman joins us now with more on this tragic story. Reggie, I mean, it's clear Devin meant a lot to this team and to the UGA community. Yeah, Kristen, the support has been pouring across social media all day long, not just former and current players, but much of the football community, including the Falcons, Georgia Tech, and the University of Nebraska, and other teams around the SEC and the country. On the field, Devin was most used in a reserve role on Georgia's offensive line, but he had carved out a spot in their rotation. Like others who had come through the Georgia program, Willick was someone who worked hard and waited his turn. He redshirted his freshman year, running with the scout team before playing in 12 or more games in each of the last two seasons, including multiple starts in some of the biggest games of the year during Georgia's 2023 run to back-to-back -back national titles, earning more and more playing time the last two seasons. And Reggie, you get a chance to be around these players all the time. You get to see them in and out. So what were they like off the field? What, what kind of person was he like? Well, he was a great person, and we didn't get many opportunities to talk with Devin, but when we did, it was clear he was someone that was a kind soul and cares so much about others. Just yesterday, after the parade, Georgia fan Sam Kramer tweeted out these pictures of Devin and thanking him for the taking his time to talk to his grandson, also saying that Devin went out of his way to make them and make him feel special and that it made his day all the way. He also let the young boy wear his championship ring. These photos, a great representation of the person Devin truly was. According to our UGA insiders at UGAsports.com, fellow offense lineman Warren McLennan was also in that fatal car accident and was released from the hospital earlier today. He took to Twitter and simply tweeted both a broken heart and a dove emoji. Such a tragic day for the Bulldog community. I'll have more on Devin a little bit later in the show in sports. Yeah, nothing anybody could have ever expected after such a celebration yesterday. Just, just got wrenching and a terrible day. So, Reggie, thank you for that. Well, the story continues to develop. For the very latest, you can head over to 11alive.com.